Hi, this is Vivian Vandeveld. Welcome to Chapter 34 of Allison, Who Went Away. A uh, reminder that this was written and published in 2001, so some of the references are so old that your parents are more likely to get them than you. Well, Keisha invites me to a Halloween party and sleepover. My mother calls up Mrs. Carson because she's never met her and asks her about 300 questions about the party in particular and maybe a hundred more questions of a more general nature, which are obviously meant to reveal the Carson's views on child rearing, morality, nutrition, entertainment, and whether there's likely to be intelligent life in outer space. Apparently, Mrs. Carson passes the test. Mortified, I tell myself, I'm just lucky mom didn't demand to speak to Mr. Carson also and Waukesha's younger brother and sister. My hair has calmed down enough that I don't even have to go as Don King. Instead, I dress up like a girl from the 1950s with a round poodle skirt, white socks, and a ribbon for my ponytail. Waukesha has a fairy princess costume, complete with sparkles, shimmery wings, and a long blonde wig. Connie comes as a clown, wearing a wig that looks surprisingly like my hair did when I first got my perm, except that this one is rainbow colored. She's got on clown makeup and a rubber nose attached by a string around the back of her head. However, the majority of her outfit seems to come from her father's closet. Size 12 high top sneakers, t-shirt that says better 50 than dead, a flannel shirt worn upside down, a tie with tiny men playing golf on it, and boxer shorts with yellow smiley faces worn over satin pajama bottoms. I hope not Mr. Moraglia's. Connie also has a very annoying plastic kazoo left over from last Christmas, but I have the feeling that's not going to last a night. Joanne Tremonto is here wearing a beauty mark and a lot of aluminum foil because she's supposed to be Madonna. Bertie Dunbar has come in a bunny costume her aunt made for her younger brother last year. She's wearing white knee socks and has her arms wrapped in surgical gauze to hide the fact that the bunny suit's arms and legs are considerably shorter than hers. Well, Keisha has also invited two girls I don't know, Vanessa and Sonia, who live on her street. Vanessa doesn't say much, but giggles at everything. Any, the, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Vanessa doesn't say much, but giggles at everything anybody else says. Sonia has a tendency to be bossy, but she does have good ideas. Sonia is dressed in her mother's wedding gown, and Vanessa is wearing a tuxedo. Periodically, they link arms and freeze, pretending to be the top of a wedding cake. The Carsons have ordered in pizza, and they must have been popping corn all afternoon. There are enough soft drinks to make us burpy and silly. We have the whole basement to ourselves, except that Waukesha's brother and sister keep sneaking down here, and then they jump out at us, trying to scare us. Waukesha yells, Ma! And her mother tells the kids to leave us alone, and ten minutes later, they're back. Waukesha's grandmother, who lives with the Carsons, insists that we bop for apples, try to walk with gourds balanced on our heads, and try to eat sugared donuts hanging by strings, all of which are more fun than they have any right to be. From six to seven, we go to the mall, where the stores have people handing out candy to anybody willing to wait in lines. We hear a few comments about two old kids, but Sonia answers that looking old is just part of our costumes, that we're really eight-year-olds. In the mall, I spot Allison in the shoe store, and I'm so glad to see her that I don't even think, what's the matter with her trying on shoes when she's got about two dozen pairs in the closet at home? But then she looks up, and it's just some blonde teenager, not Allison at all. Back at the Carsons, we play loud music, eat candy, and try to scare the little kids who come trick-or-treating to the Carson store. When we've eaten too much to be able to make it up and down the stairs anymore, Waukesha tells us she's rented two scary movies to keep us up all night. First, she puts on Psycho, which we all agree isn't all it's cracked up to be. Well, Keisha's grandmother has told us we'll never again feel safe taking a shower. But how can he be scared when the blood isn't black and white? We don't find it the least bit scary. And we start fast forwarding. 
The second movie is about these nasty little creatures that feed on human flesh, but it's more dumb than scary. We give up before the end. While Keisha starts looking through the cabinet where her family keeps their videotapes, but the only thing we can all agree on is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. We watch that, but it's only a half hour long, and afterward, while Keisha is back to reading titles from the tapes that her family has recorded. Suddenly, she says, How about the Robert Dietz documentary? That's got some pretty gruesome bits where they show police photos of the bodies. Real quick, without even looking at me, Connie says, Everybody's seen that already. I haven't, Vanessa says. Sure, just about the only thing she said all evening. I think maybe I'll strangle her. You didn't miss much, Connie says. So, I think, Connie watched it too. But Bertie says, no, it's cool. They have this one interview that Channel 3 did, talking with a bunch of prostitutes after people saw that... Let me do that one again. They have this one interview that Channel 3 did, talking with a bunch of prostitutes after people saw that there was a pattern, but before Dietz was captured. And it's real spooky because there's this one prostitute. She's kind of pretty, and she seems sort of nice and all. And then they say that she disappeared later the same night they recorded the interview. You mean he killed her that night, Vanessa asks, like she's got a shiver running up her back. Bertie shrugs. He only admitted to the ones they found bodies for. There's a whole bunch who disappeared, and nobody knows what happened to them. Maybe they went away to someplace safer, Vanessa says, which is sweet, if naive. I decide not to strangle her after all. Someplace safer, Joanne scoffs. I vote no, Connie says, though nobody's asked, because she's seen it while Keisha is bending over to put the tape in the VCR. I second, I say real quick. Vanessa hesitates and says, I third. I vote yes, Bertie says. Joanne says, it's not like anybody's coming up with any better idea, which brings it to three to three, with Sonia holding the tie-breaking vote. Robert Dietz, Sonia says, waving her hand dismissively. That's not the scariest thing that's ever happened in Port Champlain. Let me tell you. And she launches into a long but well-told goosebump raising story, which turns out to be a variation on the hook hand story. Then Wakisha tells us about some little girl who fell into the foundation hole when Mother of Sorrows was being built and how the concrete was poured on top of her. And sometimes when you're alone in the basement, you can hear her scratching at the underside of the floor, trying to get out. Then Connie tells about this other little girl who appears on foggy nights on Lake Avenue, crying and crying and begging for help. And when you follow her, she leads you straight to Holy Angel Cemetery, where she disappears among the tombstones. At which point, Wakisha's mother comes down the stairs, nearly giving every one of us a heart attack. She shakes her head as we continue to clutch at each other and shriek. You'd better settle down, she warns us. Six o'clock is going to come fast. Luckily, the Carsons have two bathrooms, or we'd never all be able to get ready for school tomorrow without getting up at three o'clock in the morning. I volunteer to take my shower tonight, since that will work out better with my hair, and Wakisha says she'll take one tonight, too, because all the sparkles she sprayed on her face and arms are beginning to itch. We need two other girls for a second shift tonight, and they draw donut holes to see who it'll be. Sonia and Joanne lose, getting the holes with powdered sugar, though Sonia tries to lick hers off. Since this is, after all, Wakisha's house, she gets settled faster. I take longer to gather my stuff, and as I pass by the big bathroom on my way to the smaller one off her parents' bedroom, I hear Wakisha humming to herself and the water running. Then I hear a very loud scream. The bathroom door flies open, and Wakisha's little brother and sister come tearing out, laughing and running so fast they almost knock me down. You little perverts! I hear Wakisha scream between gasps for breath. Ma! Okay, okay, so maybe Psycho is a little bit scary. Allison, who went away, stay safe and be kind.